In this video, we're going to look at proof by contradiction. So let's try and prove that when you add a rational number to an irrational number, the answer will, will always be an irrational number. This is what we're trying to prove. But before we prove it, let's try and understand the situation. If you get a rational number, add an irrational number. Let's say if you add the two together, let's say the answer is k. Now the answer k can, can either be an irrational or it's a rational. It can't be both. This, this answer k here, um, you can either express it as a fraction or you can't express it as a fraction. It can't be both. So this number k here is either an, an irrational number or it's a rational number. If it's not a rational number, then the number k will have no choice but to be a, an irrational number. If the number k is not an irrational number, then, then the number k has no choice but to be a rational number. So the, so the idea behind proof by contradiction is that you, you create the opposite scenario as this. So, uh, so, so you assume that it's a rational number. So, uh, so let's, let's say it is a rational number. But the thing is, when you make this assumption and then you try and get back to here, something breaks down. Something does not make sense. Something will lead you to a fact that you can't make this assumption. Something will contradict this assumption. So, so, so the idea behind proof by contradiction is that you, you create the opposite of this thing here. So let's say it is a rational number. But then when you make this assumption, when you make this assumption, when you try and get back to here, something will lead you to a fact that if you make this assumption, something doesn't make sense, something breaks down, so you will conclude that this cannot be true. This cannot be true. Well, if this is not true, then it has no choice but to be an irrational number. So let, let me give you an example. So we are trying to prove that um, that if you get a rational number plus an irrational number, it will lead you to an irrational number. But the idea behind proof by contradiction is that you, you make this assumption, you make the assumption that that, it, that is opposite to this. So you, you assume that the answer will be a, uh, a, a rational number. You assume that it can be expressed as a fraction. So, uh, so if you look at this here, a rational number plus an irrational number. Let's say this rational number is, is this. Let's say, yeah, let, let, let's say this rational number is c over d. And then you've got, you add a, a, a number here. Let's just call it x. Now, if you make this assumption, if you make this assumption, if you, if you make the assumption that the answer can be expressed as a over b, then, uh, then x can be written as a fraction because if you look at this here, here you've got one block plus this block equals this block. Take away this block from both sides. So, uh, so A over B take away C over D. So now merge the two together, uh, then X equals this. Now, what, what it's saying here is that if you make this assumption here, then X can be written as a fraction. But then, but then here it's demanding that X is, is an irrational number. The, the, the thing is, if you make this assumption here, what it's saying is that you can express x as a fraction. So you, so some, if, if you make this assumption here, you will contradict yourself because it's saying here that uh, x is an irrational number. So, so if you make this assumption here, then x can be written as a fraction. So, so you can't really make this assumption. Something doesn't make sense. You can't, you can't make this assumption here. So therefore, the answer has no choice but to be an irrational number. So just a recap. Hang on. Um, just a recap. The idea behind proof by contradiction is that you assume you make the assumption that that is opposite to this. But then, when you try and get back to here, something breaks down. Something will lead you. Something doesn't make sense. It will lead you to the fact that you can't make this assumption. You can't say that the answer will be. A, uh, a rational number. Well, if the answer can't be a rational number, then it has no choice but to be an irrational number. So, yeah, I hope you can follow that.